Great. How are you? Good. Good to see you, Wendy. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Hey, Carol. Good to see you. Hey. Good to see y'all. How are you? Uh oh. Doing great. You're good. good. <laughs> well, um, well, thanks for joining on here. This is uh, it's an this is you know a monthly opportunity for us to get connected and uh, encourage each other to continue on and also just talk a, a little bit about the verses. Um, I know when you're memorizing scripture, you feel a little bit alone, and um, this is meant to be kind of an encouragement to each other as well as to help us, um, you know, gain insights into the text more. So um, let me uh, open us with prayer tonight. All right, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to gather through technology in all these different places <clears throat> to reflect on your word and to uh, to grow in our insights. We want to love you more fully and completely, and we want to better understand your word and uh, have it in our hearts. So we thank you for this time where we can meet tonight. Um, we pray that, Holy Spirit, you would give us insights into your word that will help us to know you better. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So um, I thought for convenience sake, I'd, uh, I'd do this share screen of uh, things to make it a little bit easier to follow. And you can <clears throat> look at this or you can look at your pictures. However, it's uh, your Zoom is actually working uh, best for you. But I just wanted to connect. Um, well, you know what? Let me do this first. Let me stop this there so we can look at each other better. It's probably better to be more relational. Um, uh, any uh, successes or struggles over this past month with your scripture? And uh, this isn't about judgment. It's just about reality with each other. And uh, so anybody share any successes in uh, either memorizing your scripture or ways that it's been helpful to you? Well, these were a little bit shorter, so they were a little easier to memorize. Yeah. From. <laughs> I agree. Yes. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. When it's only, when it's just a few number of uh, words, it's a little easier. Good point. <laughs> yeah. Am and I the only you know, one who gets phrases out of order? <laughs> <laughs> I, I try to say what I've worked the day, before, the day before, first thing in the morning, and then when I look at it, I might have, I got the gist of the meaning, but it isn't exactly like the Bible as it printed. You're yes. not the only one. <laughs> the only one. Not, You're okay. not the only that one. That makes me feel a little better. I was going to blame it on my age. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I add words that aren't there. <laughs> um, any other struggles or successes for anybody? Yeah, Wendy? My biggest hurdle is connecting the passage to the, the scripture. Like, I can memorize the passage. <laughs> but then I say, no. Was that Second Timothy or was that Matthew? <laughs> was that Romans? So I don't know. I, I don't know how to. I think I'm going to have to go into the Bible. And read it from the Bible. That's a, yeah. And read yeah. what is coming before it and almost make like a timeline or something. So I know which book it's coming from. To me, that's the hardest part is. Or maybe I'm focusing too much on the scripture, getting it down pat, and I can get it down. But then I forget where, which book it's from. I have exactly the same problem with you. I, I can memorize the verse. I, when, I'm, when I'm doing it for the first time, I have the book, okay? The second time, I don't know what book it's in. Mm -hmm. So that's my problem as well. And as we're adding more, it's hard or challenging. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Good. Good. Those are excellent points. Two, two things I was going to bring up. One of which I, 
maybe about three weeks ago. Um, I watch a lot of things on YouTube, so I'll send you a link of something that uh, Wendy. It was sort of a, a, it was like scripture memory in five minutes, and it was a, it was a system. Oh. Uh, it was like a card system hmm. of like day of the week, um, week, month, kind of thing, and um, uh, I'll see if I can find that. And okay. Yeah, so, you know, I thought to myself, that's really ingenious. Her, her basic concept was. Once you learn a verse, how do you learn new verses and then retain the existing one? Yes. Yes. So, um, I, I, I got my cards that I flip through like a Rolodex, yeah. but like I said, it's 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 hard. And sometimes, if John says, "That's my husband," if he says the scripture, I might not get the the passage right away and i'll say give me the first word if he gives me the first word then i know it you know but if or if i say it i just i'm having trouble attaching the book and the verse to the passage <laughs> yeah funny. yeah and then um i don't know if you saw so i'll try to send that out um uh, michelle t uh, put in the chat here that um, her audio isn't working, but she says, I think if we, I think we, if we try to think about who said it, that may help remember where it was found. Um, and um, the other thing was I learned most of the verses I learned, I learned in something called the topical memory system. I may have mentioned that before. And it, um, the ones that I, it was like a diagram and a picture and it wow. helped me be connect the dots better um and <clears throat> so i chose not to do that for this just simply to say that there were some that i thought might be more helpful to learn than just this this one section so um for me that helped me as well just having the visual behind it so i'll send you a link to that topical memory system and that might be something you might want to consider um, all of us, Scott. Some of that. Say again, Martha. All of us. You'll well, send it. yeah, I'll send it to all of you. I'll send oh, good, a good. Copy of the recording for tonight because I'm posting that, you know, every time, and then I'll send you those links. It'll probably be Thursday when I send that out. But that's all right. But yeah. um, you can buy the system. But I was, um, I'll see if I can find it online. <laughs> So good questions. So good observations. Well, One of the things you mentioned earlier, Scott, was yeah. that it, you found it helpful to read before the scripture and following it to help you remember which book. And I find that helpful for me. Yes, get the setting. Get the setting for when the, where the verse is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, context is obviously everything. So... Um, well, thank you. Well, well, let's jump into our text. I need to be, um, ooh, where'd it go? Uh, there we go. Can you see that? All right. Uh, I wanted to look at the context of the verses that we're memorizing this month. And um, there are, they are kind of short. And I want to also talk about the practical nature of these. So uh, John 1.12 um, this may be a, a verse that's familiar to you from before. Um, Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Uh, we'll look at the context here in a minute, but um, as you memorize that passage, what were the key words to you in your memorization? Receive, believe. Mm -hmm. Right. Mine was children of God. We all are children of God. Those are all those are all important words. Uh, we'll talk about that here in a second. Um, any other key words? Well, Hartford Mondoran gave the right 
to become yeah. because I think I kept forgetting that phrase. I had the children become in show of God without that, but that was just the problem I had. Gave the right to become. Uh, all right. uh, did somebody else have something else? Another word? Not another word. I just I have a I have some questions, I guess, about the use of the term the right to become as opposed to automatically became. Mm, OK, yeah, you could think of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good that's a good question. Mm -hmm. When we look at the. Uh, uh, some different translations, uh, how they interpreted that. Yeah. Um, let's look the the one that uh, one of the questions I want us to consider is uh, the who and I'll bold it so uh, yet to all who did receive him so um, you know according to this passage uh, the the way to become his children is open to everybody you know it's not open to a select few some. Um, if you're familiar in theological circles of between um, kind of predestination or Calvinism versus Arminianism of um, of who is sa who is saved, um, we as Methodists uh, on the Wesleyan stream fall on kind of the Arminian side, which basically says salvation is available to everybody. Uh, God doesn't predestine certain people to get into the kingdom. Um, Everybody has that opportunity, no matter what your background. And um, so that's one thing I wanted to emphasize for uh, our context, because this is often used. Uh, I've seen this used in a context of sort of explaining how to become a Christian. And that's sort of what I was going to one of the things I was going to emphasize today. But Ken, uh, did you want to talk a little bit more about that? The right you had raised that up as a question. Well, my thought is that uh, it, it, it feels like a two-step process. One is you receive, and the other is that you exercise your right, having having received the authority to do it. And so I, it, just, it just seemed a little odd to me. Um, I mean, there are other places, like um, Romans, Romans 9, I think in Romans 10, 9 and 10, where it says, if you confess with your mouth and you believe that Jesus raised Christ, God Christ from the dead, you'll be saved. So, I mean, there's kind of a two-step thing there too. Um, but um, I, I guess I kind of always thought of it, if you receive him, then you're his child. If you don't receive him, you're not his child. And this seemed like there was a, it, it had that sense of a, of a decision after the first decision. Are you using received to be the same as believe at faith? Yeah, well, you know, I, I was kind of relating it to a while back. My daughter worked for a company where she had, when she joined the company, they gave her uh, the right to purchase stock at a low price, but she never had to actually purchase it. She actually had to exercise that right in order to, mm -hmm. in order to take the benefit of of buying the stock at a at a extremely low price and so there was a two-step thing once she she became an employee and the second thing is she had to decide whether she was going to exercise her right or not and it almost feels like this is what we have here i've, I've received jesus i believe jesus but i'm not sure i've uh, but uh, it, it, is there a step here where i'm supposed to exercise my right to become a child of god or am i just a believer without having exercised you know so it's just it's just strange to me how it's worded mm -hmm. I yeah, think of it more as a gift. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I think in, back there in Ephesians is the gift, gift of God. Right. I think one of the, the challenges that I think we have in our culture is um, in, in some general context, we're, uh, at least this is what I think the scriptures teach. I think in a general context, we all as human beings are children of God. Like we don't make ourselves, God makes us, right? But I, I think there's a difference. I, I wrote it down here. Let me put it here. Um, there's kind of a, let me make it a little bit bigger. Uh, there's a natural birth in the, in the sense that, 
you know, God created everybody. But if you read John yeah. chapter three, and even this passage, the way you're, there's like a supernatural birth. That's where you're born again to, to Ken's point. So the way I was sort of educated in this verse, and, and maybe if I move it back, make it a little bit sm big, uh, smaller again to that verse, the way I learned this verse is sort of how do I become a Christian? So if I had to, like, as we're doing this series, and by the way, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't plan all these verses to go along with the series, but I think this does go along. But if I had to explain what it means to become a Christian or how do I become a Christian, this equation is helpful for me. I, I have to believe that Jesus Christ is who he said he is. And I have to personally receive him into my life. And when I do that, to, to Ken's point about sort of an uh, exercise, the right, then I become a child of God. Then I become uh, one of his family. Um, and for me, I, that always made sense of just the equation part of it. Um, and often when I am talking to confirmation students at the end of confirmation, I just try to see, did you? You might believe the right things, but you may have never asked Jesus to come into your life. So um, just this idea of how, how can I uh, personally appropriate that? Does that make sense? Yeah. So um, one last thing with this verse, <clears throat> the context here is important. Because this is all in John chapter one, the opening of John's gospel. Uh, let me just make it bigger again. Uh, he was in the world and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. So it, it's basically those the human beings didn't receive him. So maybe that's why they connect it in that order. Yet to all who who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent or of the human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. So recognizing um, it's a the way we become children of God is really the response to um, receiving him and uh, accepting him into our into our own life. So. <clears throat> That, that's kind of the main reason I picked this verse for us is just if you have to explain your faith to somebody or how to become a Christian, this could be a simple way to explain it. Um, do y'all have any questions on that or want to talk more about that verse? Yeah, I have something. Can you hear me? I can. I just took it off of mute, so I'm never sure. Um, so the, the thing that, that, um, since the first time I, I read this verse, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name. So I just always wondered if there was a difference between believing in his name and believing in him, because there's that other verse that says, um, Jesus is talking to the disciples. Many people call me Lord, Lord, but they did not know me. Something like that, you know what I'm talking about, right? Right, yeah. Mark. And so I always thought that that was sort of like believing in his name, but not knowing him. And so, so besides the fact that this implies kind of a two-step process to become children of God, there's also the, the fact that um, you believe in his name. Now, I think John Met believed in him. And... Also, I think that that the Christ being the Messiah was important to the disciples at this time. So maybe they meant believed in his name as in the Messiah. But anyway, this this verse has caused me some some uh, pause. Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, you know, it would be interesting. I mean, uh, if you would like to at some point. You could do a word study on that word belief in the book in the book of John. That that's how I would want to approach that is well, how did John use that word? And what did that mean in the context uh, of his uh like for example, I mean, 
John 3, 16, right? For God so loved the world, mm -hmm. his one only son, that whosoever believe in him should not yeah. perish, right? So how is that verse or that word used in John's gospel? That would be a, an interesting word study that you could get into that. And maybe there's some nuances there that, you know, might add some color. So do you think there's a... Um a different Greek word for believe in the two different contexts? Well, one thing that, that what I would do if I was studying this, uh, just this word I could, I would do, let's see if I can do this really quick. I don't know if I can, but let me see if I can uh, go to this. Nope, let me go to that. All right, stop. Uh, if I can go to share screen. All right, here we go. So let's see if this will work. Um, I will type in John 1, 12, uh, Greek. So usually the first thing that comes up is a text analysis. So I'll do this. So this is actually... Let me get, I don't need to hear about Bojangles. All right. So, uh, so this would be the word, this is this is sort of the the what it has in, in the in English. And so this is what it's in the Greek. And so the idea of belief, right? So I would type this in or I hit that hyperlink. And it might, it looks like that exact Greek word is used 14 times. And then here it is in, so, so you can actually see all the references there. Mm -hmm. So I would just go to those uh, verses and look to just to research about how that word is used in the context. So that maybe there'd be some, um, an insight that I would get. They also have Greek. You could also, I've done this before, where I'm just going to say I'll, I'll copy and paste this. I'll control V, hit that. Here's the Greek word. And maybe I'll get Bill Mounts is a, a, is a very good um, reference material. So I think that often comes up. So that might give you some more, if you want to study the word, do a word study. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We'll let Bear do that. That's well, and that's good. But you got to get the tense right on the verb. Um, exactly. Yeah, which well, um, which it, you may uh, unintentionally eliminate a reference because it's believe instead of believed, or believing instead of believe. So, but yeah, that's a good that's a good thing to do. So I will try that. Yeah, yeah. So the, at least the root is the same in John three sixteen as it is in one twelve. Uh, Good. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to go on to the next verse. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, let me go back to our share screen. Do this. <clears throat> and we're going to look at the Matthew 18 20 mm -hmm. passage. This is once again very short. Um, for where two or three gather, uh, I learned it has come together in my name. Uh, there I am with them. Um, so I wrote down just a couple of questions. What do you think it means to come together in Jesus name? I think, you know, it means acknowledging him, maybe through prayer when you're meeting, whether it be study of his word or even a blessing over a meal, you know, that if you are praying for the, his blessing and his presence, that's what it means that he will be there. Yeah, yeah. So interesting. I mean, think about it. That means according to this verse, he is with us now. Right. Yes. Right. I should certainly hope. But so. he's with us always. Yeah, I I, I think sometimes though sometimes we um, 
I don't know about you, but I've had times, <laughs> maybe this goes up for the next one. I've had times in my life where I wasn't sure I felt like God was actually doing anything. Does that make sense? Right. Oh, well, I think yes. we have. Some. Yes. And yes. You feel like maybe you say you start a Sunday school class or you, you're whatever. And, and, you know, just that whole idea that Christ is there and sometimes you don't feel it or mm -hmm. can't feel it. Mm -hmm. Just to, to recognize that uh, as an encouragement. Um, it also seems kind of like in the context here, at least as I as I understand the context, there's this, there's some issues of, of uh, disagreement or maybe even accusation between people. And and, and the, the passage is kind of working us toward, well, how do we resolve that? And and if and you, you can make a decision to try to solve something in a secular sense or you can try to or you can make a decision to try to resolve something in a in the context of of your fellowship with christ and um and your fellowship with one another and and, and so i'm i, I kind of felt like what he was getting the point that he was matthew was getting to was that we um uh that the, that if that if our desire is to is to resolve this in a christ-like way that we can rely on christ to be with us as we're working through that oh i think that's very appropriate yeah and the way i the way i learned this verse is it was about fellowship uh the context the way i was taught was this is all about fellowship that we're, christ is with us but when you look at the context of it it's really about disagreement it's about you know pointing out sins with each other um and it actually takes on a, a much more rich um way that christ is with us even in our difficulty where we disagree with one another even to the extent that um bodies are not uh at all on the same page um so let's let's look at the second question um how is this pro promise how would this promise be helpful for living out our faith I think it is helpful. <laughs> For me, it is helpful. Just it knowing me, that. It makes me think about when Jesus sent the disciples out two by two. And um, just the idea of not being alone. And even though he... He's with us. He's with us. And I feel like uh, he's, the phrase is he's among us. So it's almost like uh, he's in us, but he's also among us when we're together. And just that, like you said, the fellowship, it's just maybe a little more powerful or um, more helpful to persevere and 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 be bold. And yeah. Yep, those are all those are all really important. And, and I think you know what is there is there a difference between two or three gathering and gathering in His name? You know, mm -hmm. just look at the difference of in my name. What's the significance of that? I, I think the for me the significance is when you've made a decision and you've been operating oh. under His authority and in His name and in His presence, then it's a decision you can be confident in regardless of what the, the outcome appearances are. Mm -hmm. I think it means that uh, corporate prayer has power. Yeah. And we as Christians should seek that out as much as possible. Yeah, the, the verse in front of it is, that's a wow verse, right? So again, truly ask that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for it will be done for them in heaven or by my father in heaven mm. that's what the four is for also in that that power message was is when we have later in the year which is 
If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. So there's there's some power there too. Yeah, agreed, agreed. So, you know, one simple thing that could apply to this is just, uh, I'm gonna stop the share, is just simply when you're in your next small group meeting um, or you're in church, <laughs> that could be a reminder. Or it could be something that you use to encourage uh, people that are there. Um, if you're ever leading a meeting, uh, and sometimes you feel like this is not this is going south, or where is God in the midst of this? Um, being able to speak those words is a way of um, drawing people's attention to the Lord and also encouraging yourself. And that sometimes God's at work in ways we can't see. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I said we'd be done in about a half hour, and so it's been about a half hour. So um, keep at it. I, I, if you would like, um, if to continue to find this helpful, we can do this, you know, once a month. I do think maybe in June or something, if, you know, I look at you, Martha. Uh, I, I wonder, you know, and I think of the distance sometimes, but it might be good to get together this summer just to, for those who are doing this, just to uh, physically come together yes. in his name, right? Uh, yeah. 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 So, yeah. All right, well, let me uh, close this in prayer. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to study your word. Uh, we thank you that you are with us even tonight. and. Um, those who will be watching this later, uh, we just pray that you continue to cement your word in our hearts. We ask that you would increase our ability to remember your word and to uh, allow it to uh, take root in our hearts. And then when we're with people or in certain situations, Lord, that you'll give us the right verse to be able to share uh, a word of encouragement, a word of hope. Uh, even a word of um, conviction that, that may come up from us as well. So we thank you, Lord, that we can um, to know you through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thanks, everyone. Thank right. you, Scott. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Thanks. Thanks, Scott. Everybody. Thanks. Good to see everyone. All right. Have a good night. Good can night. Bye-bye.